on today's episode of Talking to My Huge Cock. What's up, Mother Clucker? How you been? Have you seen this new guy, Woodpecker? <gasps> he is all over the internet, all over on these YouTubers' pages, and he is making tons of money. All of his products are super expensive. <laughs> I know, right? You think we could make one on our own? <laughs> Me too. Let's give it a shot. Oh man, I used to love that guy as a kid, but I'm sure he's rolling in dough today. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork, this is Brian. So today we're going to take a look at Woodpecker Squares. Now these squares are super expensive, but you get what you pay for. This is a very high quality square. But what if I were to tell you that you could make one of these with scrap wood that you have laying around your shop? Let's take a look at it today and see if we can build one. I built this one this morning in less than an hour, believe it or not. So this is not that difficult to make. Let's get to it. So if you know me, you know that my favorite square in the shop is the 642 made by Woodpeckers. This thing is great because you can set up lines across your workpiece very easily. But I have a second favorite square, and that's the 851 by Woodpeckers. And that's what we're gonna recreate today. This thing is great. It's just a little bit bigger than the 642 because it's eight inches long, and it's great for checking all those measurements to make sure that we're perfectly square. So let's take a look at what we need to make this square. So this is really all you need, is a piece of hardwood. I got this piece of walnut from my scrap pile, and this is more than enough wood to get us started. You also want a square. Now this is an empire square, and this will do just fine. But for our purposes, I'm gonna be using the 851, which we're actually gonna recreate so that we have something to go off of. Lastly, you want a tongue and groove router bit set. Now I'll leave a link in the description of where you can purchase this on amazon.com so that you can get the exact same one. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our piece of four quarter walnut and mill it up over at the joiner. I'm gonna get one side completely flat and I'm gonna get one of the corners completely perpendicular to that edge. So let's get it started. So now that we have one side face jointed and a perfectly perpendicular edge, I'm gonna run it through the actual planer a couple times and get it to that three quarter inch thickness. So let's do that right now. So what we're trying to do here is to get the thickness of the board the exact same width as the base of the 851 square. Now I'm pretty close here. I'm gonna shave off just a little bit more and then we're gonna move over to the next step. So now that we have the piece of wood that we just milled up, the exact same width as the actual base of the 851 square, it's time to move over to the router table. So the tongue and groove bit set that we're actually gonna use for this project comes with two bits. It comes with the groove bit as well as the tongue bit. Right here I've got the tongue bit installed, so let's set up our first cut that we're gonna make on our hardwood. So the setup for this cut is pretty simple. If we take a look at the tongue bit that's already been installed, you can see that there's two teeth. Each tooth is a quarter of an inch thick, leaving a quarter of an inch gap in between. Now what we want to do is to take our workpiece and align it with the very top tooth of this bit and make sure that it's completely flush. Once we feel comfortable with that, we're ready to make the cuts. So let's get started on that. So for this cut, I'm going to be taking my tongue bit and running it down the edge of one side as well as the end. So let's do that right now. So let's take a closer look at this cut. If we look down the length of the workpiece, you can see that there's a nice quarter of an inch tongue that runs down the entire length. At the very end, there's also that quarter of an inch tongue that runs down the entire end. If we look on either side of that tongue, you can see that there's a quarter of an inch material on either side of that tongue. So now let's move over to the table saw and I'll show you exactly what we just did. So if we take a closer look at our 851 square, you can see that it also has a quarter of an inch tongue that runs almost the entire length of the base of the square. And that's what we're trying to recreate. Now let's move on to the next step. So for our next step, I wanna use one of the jointed edges and I wanna make sure that this edge is completely square to that jointed edge. So we're gonna cut that at the miter saw. So before we move on, I wanna make sure that we mark the corner that we just cut. This will ensure that we don't forget which corner is perfectly square. So now let's move on to the next step. So for the next step, I wanna make sure that we continue to use the jointed edge of our workpiece. We're gonna run this through the table saw and cut it about an inch and a half thick. So let's do that right now. So here you can see that the base of the square is starting to take shape. 
Now on our workpiece, you can definitely tell that the tongue is just a little bit too long, but we'll clean that up in a little bit. Now let's figure out the width of the actual square so that everything can be exactly the same. So now let's mark the width of the actual square. Using that marking that we earlier created, I want to take my square and place it upside down on the workpiece. I want to make sure that this side is completely flush with the square and it's nice and smooth. Then I want to take a single beveled marking knife and scrape along the line on this edge. Do it two or three times just to make sure that you slice the grains. Once we have that marking in place, we can now move over to the miter saw. So using the line that we just marked, I want to make sure that we're cutting on the outside of that line. So I'll line up my workpiece so that the lasers are aligned on the outside of that line. Once I have that aligned, I'll make the cut. So now that we have a rough outline of the base of our square, let's head back to the router table and we're going to cut a groove on the edge of one side. Let's do that right now. So in order to do this next cut, I've actually lowered the bit so that the top of the actual router bit is completely in line with the tongue. What we're going to do is hog out the end of this workpiece so that we have a groove. So let's do that right now. So for this cut, we want to make sure that we're putting the groove where we put our perpendicular marking. So let's do it. So here's a closer look at the cut we just made. You can see our previous perpendicular marking right here and the groove that we just cut. You can definitely see that there were some tear out, but that's not going to matter because we're going to remove the majority of that. So now let's move on to the next step. So the next step is to create the length of the square. Now this is eight inches long and it's a quarter of an inch thick. So we're going to take the remainder of our scrap and mill it down to a quarter of an inch. So one thing we want to make sure as we're milling this piece of wood to a quarter of an inch thick is we want to do some test fits into that groove. We want to make sure it's a perfect tight snug fit. So here you can see I've created a nice tight fit between the two workpieces. Let's move on to the next step. So the next step is I want to cut our workpiece down to the width of this square. Now the width of the square is one and a quarter inches wide, but instead of measuring, I'm going to actually use our square to set up our table saw. Now that I have that set up, we can cut our workpiece. So the next thing that we want to do is to remove some of this waste right here. If you remember, we had some tear out when cutting this wood, but it's not going to matter because this is all going to be removed. This is creating the gap from this edge right here all the way to this edge over here. This is one and a half inches wide, so let's go over to the bandsaw and remove this waste. So the key to removing this waste is to not come too close to our scribe line or the base of the square. We just want to get close, but not too close. Let's do it right now. So if we take a closer look at the cut we just made with the bandsaw, you can see that it's proud on both sides. We're going to clean this up with a chisel over at our vise. So let's head over there. So over at the vise, I'm going to clean up that waste with a chisel. So let's clamp it down and do some chisel work. So here's the base of the square cleaned up and it's starting to take shape. When we compare it to our original square, you can see, however, that the tongue is still just a little bit too long. From the bottom of the square to the top of the tongue should be one and a quarter inches wide. The actual frame of the square is one inch wide. So let's go to the table saw and trim this to one and a quarter inches wide. So once again, instead of using measurements, I'm going to use my square to align my table saw fence. I'm going to place it in between the fence and the blade and lock it down. Now I can take my actual workpiece and run it through the table saw. So let's take a look at where we're at right now. If we look at the base that we just created, you can see that it's almost exactly the same as the base of the 851. The only difference is this notch at the end that's taken out on the 851. Now for our purposes, I'm not gonna take that notch out as I don't think it's a critical piece. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna cut our actual length of the square down to eight inches long. So let's go over to the miter saw and cut that down. So as before, I used my marking knife to scribe a line where the cut needs to be made. So here's where we're at right now. We're getting very close and only a few more steps. The only thing left to do with the actual length of the square is to cut a tenon into the end. This needs to be a half inch wide by one inch long. So let's make some markings for that and then we'll cut it out on the bandsaw. So once again, the key to cleaning out this waste is to stay outside of the lines that we scribed. That way we can go back with our chisels and clean it up.
So here I am doing a dry fit of the piece that we just cut. And if we look at the end, we can see that we're about an eighth of an inch shy of where we need to be. So I need to cut an eighth of an inch off of this workpiece to get it to the right size. So I'll do that off camera and then we'll move on. So here I am back at the vise and if I do a test fit now, it fits much better. However, it is still a little rough. So I'm gonna clean up those edges with a chisel just to make sure that it fits together perfectly. So now that I have that tenon cleaned up, it's time to put a little bit of wood glue in that mortise and tenon and get it glued up. Now it won't take too much here because the fit should be fairly tight. Once I have that wood glue in there, it's time to take our original square and make sure that everything is aligned. So in setting up that glue up, there's two things that you wanna check. For me, I wanna check the interior for squareness as well as the exterior. These are the two edges that you're gonna be using to test for square on most projects. So you need to have both the exterior and the interior of your square completely perpendicular. So now that I've let the glue dry out for about a half an hour, there's only one last thing to do, and that's to test this square to see if it's square. So first I'll test the interior of the square. If I flip it over, I have one clean, crisp line. Now let's test the exterior of the square. And once again, a clean, crisp line. So I would say that this square is square. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did and you're not already, I'd love to get your subscription as it really means a lot for this small growing channel. This woodpecker square or this woodpecker square will get you exactly what you need when you're testing those corners or making sure that you have perfectly perpendicular lines. Thanks for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody for watching today's video. I was super amazed at how easy it was to recreate this 851 square. This is a simple project that can be done in an afternoon and will save you a ton of money. I'm certain that any skill level of woodworker could create one of these. It just takes a little time and effort and you get a chance to practice some of your skills. Well, if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love to get your subscription and leave a like. Also hit that notification bell so you can be informed when future videos come out. Thanks again and take care as always.